Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. For those of us who are joining via our drive-in in our parking lot, could I get some car horns to let me know that you can hear me? Awesome. Thank you so much. And welcome to all of those who are joining us live on Facebook uh, for our worship service today. Uh, we have a couple quick announcements before we get to all the fun stuff. Uh, we want to give a huge, extra big... Uh, hug and, or, well, virtual hug anyway, um, and Thanksgiving and just celebration for uh, Jean and Lynn Hauserman, who Thursday will be celebrating 60 years of marriage. Um, that is just absolutely awesome. Um, we are, are so thankful for them and for uh, the life they have led together, um, and hopefully when the pandemic stuff is gone, we can we can join them in person for some kind of big celebration or something, whatever they're willing to put up with from us. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think, do we have any other announcements? I don't think so. Um, don't forget, uh, if you are part of our board of directors or staff parish, uh, we will have our charge conference November 2nd uh, via Zoom. Um, and I'll have an email coming out with more info on that uh, soon for those folks. Um, but I think that's it. So let's get down to, the, down to the reason why we're here to worship and praise our God. Good morning, church. I'm Dave Monkson, liturgist for today. Will you please join me in our call to worship? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O Lord, we cry out for you, your help. Have the faithful all disappeared from humanity? All around us the wicked prowl and lies are spread. But we know, O Lord, that you will protect us. We will put our faith in you, O God to protect us from the monsters of evil. Our opening hymn is Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
our opening prayer. Please join me. People, King no, of kings, kings and, and Lord, Lord of lords, we, we know that none, none are, are above you, O oh God. God. Even, Even when, when the, the enemies we face are as tall as mountains and as threatening as, as the, end the end of our world, world we, we know you that you will be us. with us. You, you are our champion, O oh God. God. And, and we, we ask, ask you to bless, bless us with, with your presence here, here as we lift to you, you our praises thanksgiving. and thanksgiving. In the, In the name, name of, of your, your Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Now will you join me in our second hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. Please join me now in our prayer of illumination. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. By your Holy Spirit, let your words pierce our darkness, strengthen our faith, and illume our witness for you. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Proverbs 10, 27 through 32. The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. The hope of the righteousness ends in gladness, but the expectations of the wicked comes to nothing. The ways of the Lord is stronghold in the upright, but destruction for the evildoers. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not remain in the land. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perseverant tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous now 
what is acceptable but the mouth of the wicked that is preserved persevere the word of God for the people of God thanks be to Thank God our God has bestowed us with favor and honor through Christ who has given us the words of eternal life from this fullness let us now offer our gifts of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord we will now collect the offering Please join me in singing the doxology. God, we give thanks to you for Christ, the bread from heaven through whom we offer these gifts. Endow these gifts with your power, that they may express your steadfast love and impart your sustaining strength to all of those in need. Amen. I invite you now to a time and an attitude of prayer. Holy God, we come before you this day with prayers of thanksgiving for the many blessings that you bestow upon us in our lives. We are excited to be able to celebrate so many things in our lives from wedding anniversaries to birthdays to so many other milestones that are important to us and are part of our story in your creation. And even though we may not be able to celebrate the way we normally would or the way we would prefer because of this pandemic, we know that there is love going out across this world to one another from our loved ones and even many who may not know us that well. And we are thankful for that connection through you. 
God, though you taught us to bring everything to you in prayer, so today we also lift up the things that weigh heavily upon us. We lift up prayers of healing for all of those who may be suffering today, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally, whether fighting illness or injury, this, this virus or cancer, whatever it might be, oh God, we lift those people who are struggling into your hands and ask for your healing touch. We also ask that you would continue to guide the hands and the efforts of our doctors and nurses and surgeons, our lab technicians, our research scientists, and all of those who work so hard to help keep us healthy and able to go on and sustain our lives. Lord, we also lift up prayers for all of those who work so hard to keep us safe in our world. We lift up prayers for all of our service men and women serving in the military and the armed forces. We lift up all of our police and firefighters, our first responders, our EMTs, and so many others who work to keep us safe. God, we ask that you would please guide their hearts and minds, their words and their actions. Keep them safe and strong. And Lord, for those who are far away from us, we pray that they may be able to return home soon so that not only would we be able to be with them again in person, but also that that might mean that we are seeing an end to conflict around our world. We also lift up our world, every nation in this world, every leader of every nation. God, we ask that you would touch their hearts and their minds, inspire them, to find ways to work together towards peace and the betterment for all humanity and creation, not just a select few. Inspire us as well, all humanity, to find ways to work together to see one another as your beloved children, as people of equal worth and value. Help us to follow your grace, your love, and the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we might be a shining light in the world when darkness seems to be creeping up from every corner. All of these things, as well as those we keep quietly upon our own hearts and minds, we lift to you this day in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now prepare for the Lord's coming by putting aside our fears and repenting of our sins. If you would please join me in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we come to you weary and beaten down by the evil that spreads throughout the world. We have succumbed to the pressure and false promise that surround us. We have fallen short of the perfection that you require of us. But we remember your Son, Jesus Christ, who defeated death and sin to save your creation. We ask you now that we be granted that forgiveness that he sacrificed himself to secure. Amen. Please take a few moments for silent prayer and confession. Beloved children of God, fear not. The grace of God appears, bringing salvation to all. Our sins are forgiven. It is the will of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, 
zealous for good deeds, all to the glory of God, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now will you join me in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, Ecumenical Version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now, second scripture reading, Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. The whole armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the evil. For our struggle is not against enemies of the blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm, stand before and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Thanks be to God for this world's people. And our next song is number 308, Thine Be the Glory.
Our third scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 3 through 4a, which means the first half of verse 4, and then continuing at verses 7 through 9. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would join me again in an attitude of prayer. Awesome and all-powerful God, we are here in your presence today praying for your help. We ask for you to free our minds from distractions. We ask that you would free our hearts from what weighs upon them. And we ask that you would free us from the fears that dominate our lives so that we can be fully in this moment now with you as we hear your words. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this is the final week of our sermon series this month, Things That Go Bump in the Bible. And our scripture, our third scripture today comes from the book of Revelation and tells us about a seven-headed dragon. Now, I have to tell you, I have preached this series before, and the last time that I preached this series, um, prior to the sermon, I had just given a children's message talking about baptism and being family because we actually had a baptism that Sunday. How can we possibly connect these two concepts? How does the baptism of a small child, or a fully grown adult for that matter, coincide with the supposed threat of the apocalypse and a rampaging seven-headed dragon? Well, let it be said that I always like a challenge. Let's start with that reading from Revelation. The book of Revelation is one of the most theologically contested sections of the Christian Bible. Some people feel very strongly that it outlines without question what the end times will look like. Others feel that it describes the rise and fall of the Roman Empire in relationship to the Jewish people and the Christian followers of the time. Still others feel it was a matter of just some ramblings of an isolated and exiled man who began to lose his grip on reality and wrote down the dreams and hallucinations that he began to experience. Did you know that the book of Revelation was not originally included in the group of texts that made up the Bible, that it is not a part of the original canon? It was not included until the Council of Nicaea, or it was not included at the Council of Nicaea, but it was added several years later at another gathering of faith leaders. Regardless of how you take these passages, whether as literal truth, theological interpretation, or just some crazy stories, there is a lot of value here for everyone, regardless of where you may fall on the theological spectrum. Let's look at the scripture reading again. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. So we're not just talking about the kind of dragon that we might see in some of the Disney or Pixar movies. Even the dragon in Sleeping Beauty, while as scary as that dragon was animated, um, I don't think that even comes close to what we're talking about. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Reign of Fire, a personal favorite because it's not really a good movie, it's 
It's kind of actually humorous, and it's not supposed to be. Um, it's a fantasy action film. But if you've ever seen that, that is where dragons have taken over the earth and humans are hiding in fear. And even the dragons portrayed in that movie are nowhere near what we are talking about here in this scripture passage. No, we're talking about a gigantic, huge, monstrous creature with seven, seven heads, ten horns, and a crown on each of his heads. And this thing doesn't sound very friendly, like, as I mentioned before, some of the creatures from Disney or Pixar. This is definitely not something you would have seen in How to Train Your Dragon. No, we read about how its tail knocked a third of the stars of heaven down to the earth. Let me say that again. It knocked down a third of the stars of heaven to the earth. I believe that I have an immensely powerful imagination. Um, and I'm still not sure that I can completely begin to fathom what that looks like. This is some serious power and a very real threat to humanity and creation. This, this thing, the seven-headed dragon, it's not messing around. This is without question one creature that I know I would not want to cross paths with. But as we continue to read on, we find the hope and the salvation that we have in God. It continues with, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. So we find that God's army of angels is not only able to defeat this dragon, but the dragon's army of angels as well. Victory is secured, right? So all's good. Threats neutralized. Happy ending all around. Yeah? We can all go live happily ever after in joy and peace playing music on harps and, and lutes and lyres, just like a Disney or Pixar cartoon or some other fairy tale story. Good times. Well, not quite. You see, if we read on, we see that the battle continues down here on Earth. And there is a lot more to come. The dragon continues to attack. And verse 17 actually goes on to tell us that the dragon was angry, shocker, and went off to make war on those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. Well, guess what, folks? That's us. That is all Christians in the world. The dragon is now focusing its anger and attack against people like us who claim Christ and are in relationship with God. But there are some things that we claim about in our faith traditions that bring us hope. We believe in an all-powerful God, one that loves us and wants to be in relationship with us. We have read here that God's angels can defeat this great dragon. So we know that we are not alone to fend off this attack, this, this push. We are not alone. It is not just us. God is with us. Let's take a moment or two to step away from the scary dragon running around eating things and spraying fire all around, whatever it might be doing, and look at our theology of baptism. And when I say our theology, I mean the United Methodist Church's theology that we claim when we are, you know, in worship together, whether across the internet or in the same physical space, as well as when we are out in the world. I know many of you have already been baptized, but I'm guessing for the large majority of you, it happened when you were very young and you might not remember any of it or even parts of it. But regardless of when it may have happened for you, some particularly important things are recognized as happening in that moment. One of those things is that we claim a new identity. When we become Christians, we are called or we are said to be putting on Christ. And baptism is a celebration of this new identity in Christ. That is why we start the baptism, baptism with renouncing evil and sin of the world. And then we move on to pledging our loyalty to Christ. 
Another thing that is happening during this time is that we are entering into a covenant with God. But this covenant is not initiated by us through our pledge of loyalty. Rather, it is initiated by God, and it is recognized through the words that we have said, or that we would have said if we were doing a baptism this morning. The Holy Spirit works within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Baptism is just the beginning of our relationship with God. It is one of the, the doorways through which we enter into relationship with God. And I say one of the doorways because there are more than just one. In the United Methodist Church, we do not believe that you must be baptized to be saved. But we do believe that baptism is a gift of God's grace that we receive as part of our journey of salvation. So those who have not yet had the opportunity to be baptized or don't even know about it, they are not lost. And the God we claim in our faith and our theology is one that I believe to be a God of love. It is because of God's love that God in invites us to be baptized and to be in relationship with God. It is because of God's love that Christ came to suffer, die, and rise again after defeating sin and death. That love wrote a new covenant and establishes us all as children of God. So what does the seven-headed dragon that we've read about from the book of Revelation have to do with our baptismal covenant with God? Well, if we look at both situations, we find two separate examples of the same thing. We see the examples of God's love. We find God's love in the battle against this evil dragon, and we find God's love in the covenant of baptism. And I think that some would argue that the covenant that we enter into through our baptism is not only recognized in the moment when the dragon attacks, but it is upheld when God retaliates against the dragon and defeats it. Now that is not to say that those who have not been baptized would not be saved from the attack and wrath of the dragon. As I mentioned before, baptism is not required for salvation. But the covenant is also upheld in that moment. And that also assumes that moment will come in the way it is described to us. The truth is, we don't really know exactly what will happen in, in the end, or for that matter, when the end may come. Many people have tried to determine when the end of the world will come, and so far, nobody's been right, because we're still here. Um, people using all kinds of different methodologies from mathematical formulas to uh, uh, supposed prophecies and trying to pick apart different things, we're still here. So, so far nobody's been right. The Gospel of Matthew even affirms this where it says, but about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. What we do know, or maybe what, rather what we believe we know through our faith, is that our God loves us and wants to be in relationship with us. We know that because of what we find in Scripture. We know that because we believe that Christ came to this world, became human and divine, and then suffered, died, and resurrected after defeating death and sin. God made that sacrifice because God loves us, because we matter to God. We know that God continues to love us through the blessings we receive every day. We know that God continues to love us in those moments in our lives that we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. So as we close this sermon series about the monsters and the scary things we find in the Bible, I hope that you have come away with some important lessons and ideas about our God and our faith. We talked about monsters in our dreams. We talked about the monsters of the unknown. We talked about our fears and, and where they really come from. 
Today we've talked about one of the evilest monsters in Scripture, this great seven-headed dragon. But throughout, we've also talked about God's love. We've talked about God's protection. We've talked about being in relationship with God and trusting God. And today we talked about the new covenant that God invites us into through our baptisms. We talked about just how powerful God's love really is and that it stretches to all humanity and all creation. In every dark place, we still found God's love there. In every scary moment, we still found God's love with us. It is my sincerest hope that these past four weeks have given you maybe some new perspective on the fears in your life and the scary things in this world. I hope that you have maybe even found some new strength in God to stand up against those scary things. I hope that you have found maybe new levels of trust in God to go into the dark places in your world knowing that God's eternal light will always guide you and be with you. And as I tend to do, I want to leave you with a challenge for when you head out from this place or when you stop watching us on Facebook. And that challenge is one that I know itself may be scary for some of you, but it's a very, very important one. I want you to go from here and share what you have discovered about God and about fear with someone else in your life. Share it with someone who may be facing some of their own scary situations. Share it with someone who is living in fear in their life. Share it with the person that you think needs it the most right now. Because that is what we have been charged with doing. As United Methodists, we claim our mission to be to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And it's through sharing these messages and these things that we learn about our faith and sharing our faith that we help accomplish that mission. It's a mission that we must always lead with love and do in a caring way. We can't beat people over the head with it. It's not what Christ would do. Fear-mongering and coercion are never, ever appropriate methods. But I encourage you to go out with God's love as your guide and share it with everyone you encounter in everything that you say and in everything that you do. Let God's love and grace shine through you as a light to the world. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 533, We Shall Overcome.
Uh, two quick announcements. Uh, don't forget, next week we will be celebrating communion, so make sure to bring your own Jesus. Um, we will also probably have a couple of the prepackaged things uh, available as well. Um, but if you are able, please bring some bread and juice so we can celebrate that all together. Um, and uh, not to, I feel horrible, I'm not trying to call her out, but Belinda, if you are here today um, in the parking lot, if you could come by, I need... Uh, to have you sign something for charge conference. Um, if not, we'll find a way to meet together during the week. Um, anyway, now, beloved children of God, the most high God, the living God gives you strength. The Lord Jesus Christ feeds you with his flesh and blood. The Holy Spirit fills you with life. You are blessed by the Holy Trinity. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of God's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be ab able to stir stand firm as you boldly proclaim the gospel of peace in word and deed. Know that God loves you. You are a child of God. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Have a good week.